basically in the past two years, we've been really exploring how brand brand engagement with racially and culturally diverse consumers is evolving. Um, and we've been doing an ongoing series called cultural diversity campaigns. Uh, that's specifically looking at marketing campaigns, as well as deeper dives into specific consumer groups. And that's our diversity for a new decade series. Uh, and that the most recent version was um, looking at black consumers across all different categories. And one of the reports is around sort of advertising, advertising and media. Um, and it's interesting because we've written a lot about this on stylus, right? And there has been some positive movement towards better representation in advertising, but, um, but the report, I believe sort of suggests that there's been a bit of a backslide. Is that, is that right? We have seen a shift in a positive direction, but, um, you know, brand fails are still happening with semi regularity. Uh, but then more often it's not egregious mistakes, but brands. Uh, creating content that just doesn't really resonate and people don't feel seen. Um, and there was some research published a few months ago by Dunsu, the agency that confirmed this. And they actually found that black American respondents were less likely to say they feel reflected in ads, you know, in 2022 than they were, uh, last year. Um. You know, they found that black respondents said they are seeing more ads featuring black people. So, you know, there's this disconnect. There's, there's more representation, um, but it's, it's not particularly successful. And when you spoke to the people that you interviewed for the report, what, what do you think, what was their response to this? Why, why have things sort of got worse, not better? Um, you know, I think it comes down to a couple of main, uh, pitfalls that brands are falling into, um, you know, and, and the big one is, is surface level representation. So there's more diverse spaces in, in marketing, uh, and it kind of stops there, you know, basically the whole concept and context of the ad or, or whatever marketing it is, is not rooted in the culture. Um. You know, one of the people who weighed in with us was uh, Zach Stubblefield, who from the agency Preacher in Texas. You know, he said uh, brands made it a point to have more black people in ads without bringing in more black perspectives. Um, so we got subpar ads instead of thought out campaigns. Um, you know, so it, it always comes back to putting black perspectives at the center. Um, you know, and on, on the positive side, uh, one of the, the really nice examples of a brand that's doing that is New Balance. Um, they've been collaborating with Joe Freshgoods, who's a creative director and designer from Chicago. Um, so they've been doing merchandise collaborations, but um, they also have a content component. And these are created by Joe Freshgoods, working with the Black employee group at New Balance. So a really smart way to go about it. Um, and there's, there's a particularly fun, uh, commercial in the campaign, the campaign, which is called conversations amongst us. Um, you know, in their words, it shows how two black men can communicate with unique words and gestures that don't have to be explained. Um, and the ad features Kawhi Leonard, who's, uh, the NBA star and Joe Freshkins uh, communicating in this way and then subtitles kind of humorously explain what they're saying. Um, you know, one of the brand strategists that we consulted with, uh, Sonia Thompson, uh, she described it as very culturally intelligent. You know, she said it, it's real, it's every day. Uh, so the, the concept of the ad is rooted in truths around black culture not simply, you know, black actors in a scenario instead of white actors. Just to go on a little tangent, we've also seen this, um, this issue apply to other racial and ethnic groups. Uh, so brands will depict kind of a, a generic Latino or Asian American and, you know, shy away from details that reflect a distinct cultural heritage or marker. And, um, you know, that's generally always 
uh, a mistake. You know, one of the ads that we've written about in the past is uh, Disney did a, a Christmas 2020 commercial that was produced in the UK, which was an animated story of uh, a Filipino girl whose um, his family has immigrated to the UK. And the grandmother grandmother retains a, a Filipino ritual of making a parole, or it's a seasonal star lantern. Um, and what's really interesting is that, you know, these are unique details that are unlikely to uh, be familiar to mass audiences, uh, but they they do still connect, you know, uh, this campaign had a massive amount of likes on YouTube and then Disney did a, a sequel last year, December 21, um, you know, in which the girl is grown up and she continues this tradition. So getting at, at these authentic details, I think is is really, really important. How do you think that brands and, and advertisers and marketers can tap into that cultural intelligence? I mean, is it is it a case of you need to you need to have your your experts in house um, with authentic voices uh, guiding this sort of these sorts of campaigns? Is it a case of partnering with the right sort of people? I mean, all of the above. You know, the example with Joe Fresh Goods is is that they basically handed over the reins, uh, but also brought in that in house group, which is was a great um, mentorship opportunity as well. You know, uh, uh, the employees got to sort of really participate very directly under his guidance. Um, so you know, it's partnerships. It's it's an in house team that understands. Uh, uh, what they need to do. Um, but you know, you're not oh, going to have in-house expertise on every, every type of group and situation. So, you know, brands that are doing well are, are bringing in, um, consultants that, that are looking at everything from, um, uh, the clothes people wear, the food that they're showing eating, the the decor in their home, you know, all of these things have a lot of specificity that really uh, comes through when it's done right. Actually, another really interesting point um, and pitfall that brands are falling into that ties into that is the issue of casting. So that's another thing where brands have for a long time, they've cast kind of ethnically and racially ambiguous people, or they'll have a racially mixed couple. And the idea is that, you know, oh, many different ethnicities and races will identify. Uh, but generally the opposite happens. And then very few people see themselves reflected. Um, and, and one of the biggest problems is that this also perpetuates colorism. So this means that darker skinned people are rarely represented. Um, you know, and one of the studies I looked at actually is by a company called System One, which measures consumer responses to ads. And they found, um, this was a, a UK study, they found that uh, Black consumers, uh, particularly like this uh, UK ad, uh, IKEA ad that ran in the UK a couple of years ago. Um, and one of the reasons they gave was uh, it shows a family with darker skin tones and it's it's a whole black family. The brand didn't choose a mixed race family to try to have it both ways. Um, you know, there was an Amazon, uh, Amazon Super Bowl commercial from last year. Uh, Sonia Thompson mentioned that she particularly liked this ad, which is um, it's with Michael B. Jordan. Uh, and there's a black woman who's kind of fantasizing about him and he's sort of embodying the Alexa, um, you know, it's quite funny and well done, uh, in general, but she pointed out, you know, the, the woman has darker skin and natural hair, uh, and it's a very positive portrayal and it's, uh, a rare one in which she felt, you know, personally reflected. Um, and also the ad is kind of leaning on the stereotypes, which is, uh, another major issue that tends to happen. You know, people, people need People need this to feel seen, you know, they don't feel seen in, in these kind of generic attempts or sort of surface level attempts that, you know, are still quite common. Mm -hmm.